Hi everyone, I know that it took me a while to upload that last vlog. Sorry, I've just been really busy with school, among other things, but I'm back um, and I hope you enjoy this week's. I am in Interlock in Switzerland right now because that's where I went for the weekend, so hopefully y'all enjoy my travels. I began my week by working on my self-portrait and doing some chores, actually, laundry if you can believe it, and I uh, thought it was a beautiful day, and so I walked by the Pity Palace, which is actually just a block from our apartment, and I got some gelato. You can actually sit out on this little area right here. It is open to the public. Then I had an Italian cooking class, which AIFS arranges for us, and this is a little cat that they had in the kitchen. So as an appetizer, we made this little potato souffle, um, and we also made noodles ourselves, like we made the pasta noodles ourselves, uh, which can be seen here. We are kneading the dough and then putting it through the pasta maker. And I actually was the one who had to grab it and pull it out of there and give it to somebody to put on the pan. But there's our little potato souffles. Here we are garnishing them. And then of course we have our lovely spaghetti, which we mixed with a red sauce. Um, and then there was a meat sauce, but since I'm a vegetarian, I had like a little buttery garlic sauce. So we actually had two servings of pasta. But here's our chef. He was great. It was kind of nerve-wracking in the kitchen because he obviously runs a very tight ship. And there's specific ways to do everything. Uh, but it was really fun and enjoyable. Obviously, he was just kind of joking around with us. But man, I have never cooked so fast in my whole life. It was a lot of fun, though. And of course, we got to eat our delicious meal afterwards. So here is the souffle and the noodles. We also got a little dessert that we kind of helped make, but it was kind of like a flan. And then of course, back to the painting. Here's my two works, and here I am beginning or continuing to work on my self-portrait, which was actually a photo transfer that I painted over. That night, I just stayed in and got a pizza from the place right across from our apartment. And then here I am walking down the Ponte Vecchio to meet at the Uffizi Gallery to go with my history, no wait, it's Museums of Florence class, which is an art history course. Um, but here we are walking through the entrance here. It was kind of like a maze because so many sections were blocked off. But um, as you can see, they have kind of these ancient ruins underneath the gallery itself, which you can see through these little glass tiles on the floor as you walk along. It's really crazy to believe that basically everything here is just built on top of something else. But as you enter, there's this beautiful architecture, um, and it's built kind of in a U-shape, oddly enough. Um, and here are three portrayals of the Madonna and Child uh, by Cimabue and uh, Giotto. Here is Adoration of the Magi. And this next painting I don't know the name of, but since children love it so much, they actually hang it a little lower than adult height so that children will be able to see it easier. <laughs> Next is The Madonna and Child with Two Angels by Filippo Lippi and the Duke and Duchess of Urbino Federico, um, and the rest of the title is very long. But this is Spring by Botticelli, which I had to do an oral presentation on. It is so beautiful, and of course, the very, very famous Birth of Venus. Next is The Tribune Room by Bernardo Buontalenti, and each element in it, the walls, the ceilings, represent earth, wind, fire, water. And you also get this gorgeous view of the Ponte Vecchio from one of the windows at the end of the hall. And the next work is actually Adoration of the Magi or San Donato in Scopito by Da Vinci, and it was unfinished. Next is the Donitondo or the Holy Family by Michelangelo, and he also sculpted the frame. It was actually supposed to go above a bed, which freaks me out because you have a little Jesus looking down at you sleeping or doing what have you. Um, and then these are some other works with these little hidden pictures on the back, which I thought was really cool. Here's more of the hallways and um, just kind of the entryway, what you walk through. It's lined with sculptures, which is, of course, very beautiful and just capturing. And here's just a sculpture of Apollo and this dog um, that's kind of at the entrance of the museum. Next is a self-portrait by Elizabeth Marie Vigela Brun, who I actually studied in high school. I love her so much. She was the court painter during the time of Marie Antoinette, and her style is so cutesy and rococo, and everything she paints is just adorable. And then this guy I just thought looked really nifty, so I filmed him as well. 
I don't remember the name of this particular room, but the color combination, the architecture, I love it so much. So I don't think it's too much to ask for my future house to look um, exactly like this. And of course, we get another beautiful view of the Arno River uh, from that particular room. And this actually was the end of my class period, so I decided to go venture on my own. Um, and here I saw the Judith beheading, what is his name, Holofernes? Fernies? I don't know, very dramatic, but I just think it's great. Um, the lighting, the color, everything. And then this room was a particular favorite of mine because it focused on Medusa. And I really loved these sculptures. I don't remember the artist, but there were two of them, one black, one white. They kind of look like chess pieces a bit to me. And then this shield by Caravaggio, which I remember distinctly being on like a little history pack of cards and it terrified me as a child, but now I love it. And then this is also Bacchus by Caravaggio. He looks like a little boy in this instead of a big man like we usually see him. I don't really know the name of this painting or the next painting that I show you. I just thought that they were gorgeous and wanted to have a memory of them. And then after that, I went and painted some more because I am a very slow painter and I needed to finish up before my weekend trip to Interlaken. Oh, I thought the next clip would be of me going to Interlaken. Nope, this is me just sketching out a um, the next thing that I painted. And I actually used a little pointed tool like the Renaissance masters used back in the day as opposed to a pencil. And then here are these little mozzarella puffs at the McDonald's here, which are amazing. And finally, got on the bus to go to Interlaken. So our accommodation in Interlaken was called the Hay Hotel, and it was so cute, kind of whimsical, and in a great location, just the center of the city. The breakfast was absolutely delicious, and the um, beds were really soft, comfortable. I don't know, I have no complaints, so if you ever go to Interlaken, I definitely recommend the Hay Hotel. I needed to pick up some stuff from the pharmacy, which conveniently was also a 007 filming location, and I loved the little bag. It was pink, had kind of this crocodile print, very chic in terms of a um, pharmacy bag. But this is just some of the architecture and the weather, obviously a very stark contrast to Florence, and just Italy in general. I definitely want to return sometime because I don't get to go to the mountains very often. I've actually only been once before in Aspen, Colorado. So I really love the whole atmosphere. Very different from what I'm used to. Yo, I think the traveling may be getting to me because I really just spent like way more money than I should have on a wood carving of a dog, a bell, and a Swiss army knife. But you know, when in Switzerland. Since I had time before kayaking, I kind of just walked around the city, explored the little different shops that they had, and just kind of took a very serene walk. This is their mascot, this little cow, and I love her. She's adorable. She is also on everything. Hey everyone, so I'm here in Interlaken, Switzerland, um, and I don't have another activity for a little while. So I thought I would show you the hotel a little bit. Um, not much to see, but it is cute, so I might as well. This is just the background. They have little trees right there. And obviously you don't have to see the bathroom, but the main thing that I wanted to show y'all is the view. Okay, I realize now that that view was way less enticing, inviting, exciting than I made it out to be, but it really was quite beautiful and serene. There isn't really a lot going on in this town, like there isn't a vibrant nightlife. It's not super social, which again is a very nice change. And this is one of the lakes themselves. So Interlaken means between two lakes. And so this is one of the lakes. Um, I forgot the name of it. I will add it in the description because there are two different ones on either side in between or yeah, on either side of this little town. And so my first activity that I did here was actually kayaking. And this was the indoor garden of the kayaking company that um, I used. And here we are getting ready. I didn't film when we were actually on the water because obvious reasons. I didn't want to drop my phone, but the views were beautiful. You'll just have to believe me. After kayaking, I walked back into the center of town with Nicole, who was a student from Rome who came on the trip and went kayaking on the same excursion as me or at the same time 
and it was golden hour so all of the architecture looked even more beautiful than before because the sun had finally come out and of course I had to get some chocolate um, there was a place right next to the hotel called the Funky Chocolate Club and their specialty was chocolate and strawberries and it was delicious and then for dinner we just had a traditional Swiss meal which isn't anything too different or special but it was delicious I must say the highlight was the dessert, which was fruit with lemon sorbet. And then here's breakfast again. And the next day, the first thing I did bright and early in the morning was go on a snowshoe tour. And I had to put on ski pants and boots and snowshoes, of course. And we took a little tiny sh shuttle, yeah, a shuttle, a bus thing up into the mountains. And this is the gorgeous view that we had from the very top. Um, and so here I am with Nicole and Olivia, who were two girls on the trip with me, who also went on this particular snowshoe tour. And I hate how the wire kind of ruins it, but the scene is stunning. The sky was clear, the snow was bright and glimmering, and just, you know, it was, I don't know, it was so serene. That's the best way I can describe it. And of course, I had to get some Instagram pictures, because why not? I won't lie, the snowshoeing had me pretty dead. I was extremely tired afterwards, but the views were amazing, so that made up for it. But I was panting and sweating and pretty much dying. The climb itself was about one and a half kilometers long, and we gained about one kilometer of height. So I believe that would be mm, just a few miles, not even, maybe two miles. Um, like going forward and then I don't know how many miles going up but it was very tiring as I said even though the views were amazing but we did get tea and uh, little cookies in between as like a little break from the snowshoeing and that was very very nice very rewarding so this is just to give you an idea how steep the side of the mountain was and how much altitude we were actually gaining and so we finally got to the highest point of our tour and we could actually see the town of Interlaken. I don't think this is Interlaken. No, actually it is. We could see Interlaken from all the way up. And then, of course, what goes up must come down, and so we had to descend um, these mountains, which was quite difficult to do, not gonna lie. Um, I basically had to just kind of slide because of how steep it was, but you're supposed to really bend your knees and go forward, but I mean, I made it down somehow. And then after that, Nicole, Olivia, and I stopped at this little um, restaurant bar thing at the mountain, and I ordered an Aperol Spritz. It was an absolutely adorable little restaurant, and it felt so whimsical, like I was in like a fairy tale or at Disneyland or something of the sort. But here's another view of the mountain before we went back on the gondola to go back down. After that, I headed to the bus stop to go to the top of Europe, Jungfrau Jok. And here were some horses on the street. Hey Julie, it's me currently in Switzerland at the train station. I'll try not to talk too long because my phone only has 50% and I'm about to get on a train that's like two hours away. Sorry mom and Jordan, I know y'all were scared about that. I'll be fine, everything will be fine. But um, yeah, just vibe in here. About to go to the top of this, just went snowshoeing which almost took me out. But I love this little country, it's very quaint. Extremely different from Italy. And I just really like snowy weather because we don't really get a lot of that. Uh, in the parts of California where I am, I don't really go to see it. Um, and also in Texas, obviously, we don't really have it. Um, so yeah, just vibing. Got my little passport books. I already showed you all that, but um, can't wait to go. It's going to be so much fun. Apparently, this is like the spot that you see on Twitter all the time of like the train going through the Alps. Yeah, that's what I'm about to do. Then after that, I have night sledding. So yeah, good times. I will keep y'all updated. I'm so sorry for the lateness of the last few vlogs, but I've been having to do tests. Midterms are this week, but I promised I will get back on it because I know y'all want to come along and yeah, see you soon. So I had to make several transfers to actually get to the train that would take me to the top of Europe. So the first train I took um, was just a little halfway one. And then the second train I took was the one that took a few hours, but the view I can't really complain about. It was absolutely stunning. The mountains weren't completely covered in snow, but they were pretty, um, pretty gorgeous, just with the caps. I can't even imagine what this would look like in the summer because I know it would be truly gorgeous. It's gorgeous now, of course, but I can't even 
picture how pretty it would be with all the flowers and the greenery. But yeah, the further I went up, the more snow I was able to see. After taking the two main trains, I ended up in this little ski town in the very top of the mountains. I can't quite remember the name, but this is where you get on the final train to go to the very top of the mountain, which they call the top of Europe because you can see Germany and France from there. And here is this little train pulling into the station that I was about to get on. It was adorable. It reminded me of Harry Potter. I'm not going to lie, all the transfers I had to make in this trip kind of stressed me out, but it was definitely worth it to go up here. I felt like I was in a miniature that somebody built because it was so perfect. But this was the last station. I probably stopped at maybe four or five on the way up. But then when you finally get to the top, you have to pass through all these caverns because that is kind of how you navigate the top of this mountain. It was a little claustrophobic, but definitely worth it. They had a lot to do up there that I didn't get to see. <laughs> Just had to take one more elevator up and I was at the top. It's been a wild day, but I'm here. So as you can see from the reflection here, they actually had a large observation deck that was all behind glass, and it was gorgeous. I don't even, I don't even know what to say because at first I didn't think it would be worth it to go so far um, out of my way, but it definitely was because you really can't beat these views. I was absolutely astounded by how breathtaking it was. And of course they had another deck that was not behind glass. It was freezing, it was windy, and it was a little scary, but again, definitely worth it to go out there and look. It was crystal clear and beautiful. I felt like I was in Whoville, like I was the Grinch at the top of Mount Crumpet. Um, and they also have an observatory up here because I can only imagine how the stars look. But they closed 30 minutes after I actually arrived here, so I didn't have very much time to look around. And it makes sense. You would not want to be here <laughs> when it's dark. I can imagine how as terrifying it would be because there is not any light at all. But I asked a nice lady to get a picture of me because I knew I had to have one or else I wasn't there, obviously. It's funny because you actually can't tell how high up you are based on these pictures alone. But they had a couple things actually inside the mountain itself. So they had this little Swiss snow globe and, of course, a palace made completely out of ice. It wasn't as cold as you would think it would be, but it was slick and slippery, but nonetheless I was amazed by the majesty. <laughs> hey, I have to be really quiet because this echoes really loudly. This is literally a palace made of ice. It's so cool. Wow. They even had little sculptures of penguins and polar bears. It was very magical, felt very Disney. It was kind of like being Elsa in her little ice castle. So I did not get to stay here long, but it's beautiful. After my quick visit, I made the long descent back down, which wasn't as beautiful because the sun had gone down, um, but I still really enjoyed my trip all the way up. And I also thought it was cute because the bus seats on the way back to the outdoor company had little bugles or horns on them. <laughs> so cute. So we actually went night sledding in the same mountain area where we had gone snowshoeing earlier in the day. But after that, we had a traditional Swiss dinner, which is essentially just fondue. Cheese fondue with bread and vegetables. And we were in this little wine cellar. That's the table where we were. The guy in the red was our um, guide for the sledding. And I got a beer. I really do not care for beer, but I felt like I was in Switzerland, so I had to. It was just okay. If you don't like beer, you won't like it in Switzerland. That's kind of just how it is. Hey Julie, it's me. Um, just had a really fun but really busy day in Interlaken. It was probably one of my most fun days here on the, like during study abroad yet. Um, just because it was cool to kind of get out and experience a different environment than Italy. And I really like the snow. Uh, so I thoroughly enjoyed it getting on the train and having to get all the way up to the top without like anybody else with me that was really scary and stressful but I did it so um that was cool and the views were amazing definitely worth it um and I went night sledding as well I'll include a picture but I didn't obviously record any footage because I could kind of couldn't I was at night and I was just trying to enjoy myself and that was extremely fun a little scary because there are parts where you felt like you were just gonna like fly off a cliff but it was super dark you could see all the stars um it was very fairy tale esque and so i really enjoyed that 
And then we had fondue afterwards, so that was also very fun. But yeah, tomorrow we head back to Florence. Uh, I'll probably edit the vlog or a vlog on the way over since it's eight hours. But I'm probably going to wake up tomorrow, get an early breakfast, try to squeeze in like a early lunch as well. Just because I want to be able to do as much here as I can before going back. Uh, maybe buy some more chocolate. But yeah, just generally chilling. I saw the mountains, I saw the lakes, so I saw pretty much everything there was to see here in terms of geography in the winter. Um, and I don't really want to do more shopping because I did not buy much, but oh my lord, it is expensive here. <laughs> Extremely expensive. For example, at uh, dinner, this girl got a drink, like a standard, uh, a standard drink. It was 20 francs for like a glass of alcohol, which is insane. So yeah, I won't be spending much, but yeah, just vibing. It's been really nice. Cannot wait to get a good night's sleep. All right. I will talk to you soon. Oh, there's my finger. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. The Hay Hotel has two breakfast rooms, and this one is definitely my favorite because the decor is just so quirky. And since it is on the second floor, technically the first, I guess, in Europe, but the second floor, uh, you get a nice view outside of the flags. This is a casino in um, Interlaken that I want to visit sometime because there's a mountain literally right behind it. And so... I didn't know what to do with my day, so I kind of just strolled along the area where I had the first day just to kind of look at the shops, look more at the landscape. The sky was perfectly clear and blue, and I went into one gift shop where they had a bunch of cuckoo clocks, which I didn't know were a big Swiss item until my parents told me. <laughs> um, but I passed the mountains once again. I just can't get over how beautiful they are. So many people say they look like a backdrop, and I can confirm that this is absolutely true. And I also saw some kids getting in some early morning paragliding before we officially returned to Florence. The last place I passed before I got back on the bus was this little river, and I don't know the name of it, but it was so cute. There was a cafe right on the water that I really wanted to eat at but I obviously didn't have time. I definitely want to return to Switzerland though. There are so many other cities that I want to see here, but I love the calm and peaceful nature of it. It's touristy, but not that much. And the nightlife really is kind of non-existent, which is something that I also really appreciate. But then it was time to go back home. I hopped on the bus and we were back to Florence. Entertainment, of course, the Avengers. Hey everyone, I apologize for my lateness of these last two vlogs. But I've just been really trying to um, kind of explore and do my own thing and make the most out of my time here while also studying and doing school. <laughs> so that's why I haven't really been up to date with these vlogs. But hopefully me uploading these around the same time will give you your fix. And then of course we have week five, which I will be going to Venice. But yeah, safely back after my trip to Interlaken. I'm gonna go make some spaghetti, eat it, and go to bed after I unpack. But thank you so much for sticking along with me. I know everybody was hoping for these vlogs. Jordan, my boyfriend particularly, said that I was keeping the people waiting. So hopefully this makes up for it. All right. Bye, Julie. Love you, and talk to you soon. Oh, I also wanted to shout out my uh, clarinet teacher, Dr. Dean. I didn't last week, but he was my private lesson teacher when I was in um, like middle school, high school, and he, I don't know, he always talked about going to Italy, and so uh, now that I'm here, I just think about him sometimes, and particularly when I went to the Academia Museum, they had like ancient clarinets, not ancient, but like oldie one, oldish ones, and it made me want to start playing again, uh, not professionally or anything, but just, you know, for fun. So yeah, hey Dr. Dean, um, hope you're doing well, and Veronica. Veronica. I need to talk to you more. Anyway, I love you all. Goodbye.